The following is a production of White Lightning Entertainment. This is Burning Rubber Radio. And the 65th Daytona 500 is underway. He won a dual race here a year ago in the team's new debut. And he's going to win stage one as they come to the line. First stage win for Keselowski in the Daytona 500. To the flag to end stage two. Three wide, the sixth throw back. And it's Chastain by into All right, Stenhouse gets the white flag. No, the caution is out. Ricky Stenhouse has won the Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Daytona 500 winner. Let me tell you, that's been a long time coming. Burning Rubber Radio is brought to you by Drive Refine. It's more than driver coaching. It's Drive Refine. Visit DriveRefine.com to get signed up today. Now from the White Lightning Entertainment Studios in Statesville, North Carolina, here's your host, Andy DeLay. It's Burning Rubber Radio, as he says there at the beginning. Hey, everyone. It's time for another of uh, it's another edition of the fastest 60 minutes of motorsports. Of course, I'm your host, Andy Delay, and we're burning rubber, baby, for another hour here. Burning rubber after Richmond, which was another I all I can say is uh is that Martin Truex Jr. snake bit. Yes, yeah. that's that's about all I can say to that. And anyway, folks, beside me, of course, I've got the NASCAR chef John Dix. Over here, ready to feed us a little later in the show. And, of course, uh, turning the dials and being the boss hoss here is uh, Wayne Owens. Wayne, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a good show and a lot of good stuff. Talk about Xfinity Series ran this weekend, which uh, Chandler Smith, uh, another win, number two for him on the year. And, uh, of course, Larson takes the pole, but he doesn't win the race. That went to Denny Hamlin for number two for him on the year. So, yeah. lots to talk about. A lot of stuff to talk about, but realistically here, I think the topic that really needs to be brought up, because I've seen this amongst a lot of my media cohorts this morning and this week, is that the ticket sales at Richmond were rather abysmal. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, and terrible. So we're 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 going to touch on that along with all of the other news of the week that we've got this week. In fact, actually, our next segment instead of news of the week this week, folks, we're going to go into you know some we're we're going to get on the soapbox a little bit. All three of us get a chance to hop on the soapbox this week to talk about thoughts about why we should or should not run on major holidays. And especially with scheduling and TV and other things like that, I think that'll I think that'll open up a whole. <laughs> it'll, it'll be another reason for NASCAR to be pissed off at us again. <laughs> what else is new, man? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> really, really, yeah. really. I mean, I mean, I mean, NASCAR already looks at us like, "Yeah, hey, you're fat boys." <laughs> That's awesome, man. And and after the show, we get done here. And poor John's going to be putting his credentials in for Talladega and NASCAR will say, hey, welcome. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Elton will give me an earful when I see him. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. El Elton Sawyer's going to look at him and be like, John, you sorry as some bitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Lord. So, <laughs> did, any, did anyone else up run this weekend? Any Formula One rain? Anything? No. That I can tell from uh, uh, as far as big name series go, but uh, they did hold a re another uh, hybrid test with all this new stuff that they're trying out, and we've got some comments from some of the drivers who had gotten out and run some of that stuff this past weekend. Uh, but uh, other than that, World of Outlaws was out as well this weekend too, and uh, one of our uh, one of our well known uh, well known names is back in the news on that one this weekend. No, it's not Kyle Larson. Um, but we'll talk about oh, okay. all that when we get to all of that fun stuff and news of the week coming up later on in the show. Uh, but John, this week's guest though, too, by the way, is I would dare say a really cool guest. We've got one of the curators of the NASCAR hall of fame. Am I correct? <clears throat> That's right, Wayne. And I tell you what, um, put the hall of fame on your bucket list. Cause I've been there before and it's mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Um, really good. They do it real well. Very classy. Yep. Um, 
and a lot of things to do there. So we're going to talk to Tom and um, and and let him uh, tell us all about it. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Tom Jensen from the NASCAR Hall of Fame works uh, works right alongside Winston Kelly and all those guys uh, down mm-hmm. here in Charlotte, North Carolina, at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, right off of. Uh, Mar- it's actually right at the corner of East Brooklyn Village and uh, and not South College Street. I forget the I forget the cross street that it's off of. But it's it's in Charlotte. Yeah, it's right there. It's right there in the heart of Uptown. So not not only can you go check out the Hall of Fame, there's a Buffalo Wild Wings right next door. And they oh, got- you know that. Andy, I love you too. Hey Wayne, I love you. I, I love you too, brother. But. Uh- <laughs> No, Lord, but Lord. Uh, but uh, but I know this because of my time as an Uber driver, not because I've been inside of Buffalo Wild Wings. But um, mm-hmm. that, and then of course, God knows if you're <laughs> if you're in the younger crowd, there's enough bars around too to keep you uh, keep you drunk and happy too. So <laughs> I guess Wayne knows that. <laughs> Gotta wash that stuff down, right? <laughs> Here we go, starting with the. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my wow. lord, man! Wow! Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so, hey, you know what? There is something else too that's really cool. I'll tell everyone before we uh, take off here uh-huh. and do our foreign fuel and all that is Ryan Newman wins in Joey Coulter's Coulter Motorsports equipment. Yeah, it modifies him this weekend. He, That's really cool. I, I heard wow. some, I heard some about that with the picture that Joey and Jess put up on Facebook. So uh, pretty pretty happy to see that come around. Yeah, it's That's awesome. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. That's great. Yeah, really good stuff all the way around for uh, for Joey. And uh, speaking of which, folks, too, by the way, before we get ready to hit up at uh, that first foreign fuel here of the show, we got to talk about our sponsors, too, real quick. And speaking of Joey Coulter, Drive Refine. Visit DriveRefine.com. And uh, hit up Joey or Austin Terrio and get yourself uh, some uh, drive, uh, drive refined, literally, is what it is. It's not, it is like driver coaching in a way, but it's really not driver coaching. Uh, it's it just, drive refined. There you go. Mm-hmm. It, it, gives you, it gives you a way to uh, better communicate with your crew chief, whether you do simulation racing, whether you do real racing, whatever the case might be. And also go check out the folks over at MyPillow and MyPillow.com forward slash BRR. And make sure you use that promo code BRR for free shipping on yeah. all of your orders. <laughs> and uh, no, Andy, it's not free. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's what you were doing before the show. Yeah, exactly. But we won't go there. <laughs> I, I trust me. I left. I left you a rosebud in there for later. Uh, <laughs> or John even covered up on that one. <laughs> But with that said here, folks, we've mm-hmm. got to step aside. We've got to take that first Ford fuel. And when we come back, we're going to sit down about the discussion on ticket sales for Richmond this past weekend uh, versus the idea of having major sporting events on holidays. I think it'll be a fun discussion when we come back. To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing. And I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. And in our family, we're used to getting involved, and I encourage you to do the same, especially when it comes to caring for your loved ones. When I think about Alzheimer's and the impact it had on my family, I recognize that losing a race isn't such a bad day after all. 
It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough, but if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. What can we learn from a child? That spreading joy is more important than a trophy. That when we help others, we heal ourselves. That with a little love, we can make the biggest impact. At Speedway Children's Charities, our mission is simple. Help every child we can. Because all children deserve joy. And hope. And love. And if one child is still in need, then there's still work to do. Because their future is our future. And there's still so much they can teach us. Burning Rubber is social. Follow us on X at Twitter.com forward slash BRR underscore radio. Now back to more Burning Rubber. And we are back on Burning Rubber. It is producer Wayne along with the NASCA chef John <laughs> Dix and Andrew DeLay. And Lord, Andy, I swear you got that cop look when you do that every time. Well, let's see. Hmm. Oh, I'm a cop. <laughs> <laughs> You're just, I mean, you're just used to them pointing at you, Wayne, when you're flying down the road in your ocean is what shit, it is. Shit, shit, that's a lie. I never, I never do no such thing. By the way, I've done like 102 in my car before. Lord. Uh, <laughs> they, call him, they call him two-wheel Wayne in Charlotte. What, he, what he's doing the two-wheel motion or three-wheel motion? through? He's got hydraulics on his car? Like... <laughs> Uh, I, I wish it were, I wish it were that easy. Um, no, I mean, I mean, there, there are, t trust me, the way the drivers drive in Charlotte folks, if you're, if you're new to the Charlotte area, like say, if you're traveling down into the Charlotte area for whatever reason, or if you happen to be one of those wonderful people that have blessed us from California and New York and everywhere like that recently, where you're used to walking everywhere and now you're having to learn how to drive. Please do us all a favor. Go to Charlotte Motor Speedway and get all of your aggression out there instead of doing 95 freaking miles an hour on 77. Let me tell you uh, something, here. Wayne. <laughs> Wayne, I've lived in California, and they don't walk nowhere out there. They might in New York, but they don't in California. Well, whatever, uh -huh. they, wherever they're coming from, if you don't know how to drive, <laughs> go take a class. Better yet. Yeah. You know what? That's something for Joey. I think I, I think there we're gonna go. offer that to Joey. It'd be, it'd be like, hey, Joey, here's your next big thing, brother. Teach people how to drive in the South. <laughs> Walk refined. Take another swig of that beer, Wayne. All right. <laughs> Actually, no gold peak tea. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, and trust me, trust me. The color of that that's not beer. That would, if if anything, that would be like that would that would be bourbon. But uh, either way. We got to get on the soapbox here, all three of us this week, boys. And uh, the topic of discussion is if you saw it on TV yesterday, the if you saw it on TV on Sunday, the attendance at Richmond was very, Terrible. very abysmal. I think there were about. Mm -hmm. 20 Richmond can hold a hundred thousand people. Okay. Even for that half mile track and out of that hundred thousand people, we saw roughly 25,000 give or take. Mm -hmm. And even then those, that's what was sold as far as tickets go. And maybe about another five to 10,000 were comp tickets that were given out to first responders, to military, wow. to all of that stuff. And, you know, in total, in total honesty here, and this is where it's time to get on the soapbox because this is the first year in ever that I can recall that NASCAR has had a race on Easter Sunday. Now, again, like I said, folks, we're going to get on the soapbox. If you, if you don't like it, you can go ahead and fast forward past this segment. We totally understand they can't or if they're listening on the radio. Well, that's true, too. If you're listening on the radio, you have no choice. Uh, <laughs> but either which way, the fact of the matter is Easter Sunday is a national holiday for a reason. It has yep. the original religious value of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
And whether you're a Christian, whether you're Muslim, whether you're whatever, I really, that part doesn't matter to me. But the fact is Easter Sunday is there for a reason. Just like, just like Ramadan is there for the Jewish, just like Hanukkah is there for the Jewish, just like uh, Kwanzaa is there for everybody else. Ramadan's Muslim. Guys, plus the fact, plus the fact they ran it on Sunday night. Exactly. That too. A lot of people that drive a long ways, they can't get out of there that late and go to work the next day. You know, back in around, uh, 2010, Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta was doing the Sunday night late race Mm -hmm. and they got so many complaints. They stopped doing that. And that blew me away when I found out the time, you know, that Richmond started, uh, they started that race at Richmond. That was just ridiculous. Yeah. I got a, I have a whole different take on this guy. Well, uh, before we, before we get to that though, the thing, the one point that I'm going to add into it though, is that as far as like TV viewership, the numbers came out early this, uh, early Monday morning. And they they approximated about four and a half million overall viewers as far as uh, throughout the majority of the race, but probably about three point five million of them literally tuned out before the final restart and overtime where Hamlin got the win. Mm. And so I mean, just because of how late the race was running. And mm-hmm. uh, but Andy, before before we really get into all the all of the extra fun stuff, your take, sir. Here's my take. No one seems to have a problem with the NFL playing on Thanksgiving. I do. Uh, no one. The NFL doesn't seem to have a problem filling their stadiums on on Thanksgiving, and uh, if and that's their job. Guess what? I don't get the day off on Thanksgiving if I, uh, I have if I'm scheduled to work. You know, that's that's just what it is. This is their job. These guys are making more money than I can count in five lifetimes. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If you got a race on Easter, get your ass out there and get in the car and race. I didn't hear anyone bitching about that. Now, here's where NASCAR is a bit different. It's filling the stands. Like I said, the NFL can fill the stands on Thanksgiving whenever they're playing, and no one has a problem doing that on any national holiday with football. The problem with NASCAR is is they seem they tend to draw from not just the local area, but all over the region, or nationally, actually. So mm-hmm. yeah, they run into a problem, which, by the way, was very cool. They started on wet tires mm-hmm. this uh, past Sunday. But they're, you're getting folks that are coming from all over the place where, like in, in Tampa, Florida, and Tampa Bay area where I'm at, at Ray J Stadium, when the Bucks play, 90% of the folks are coming from right here in the Tampa Bay area. So if the place mm-hmm. gets lightninged out or something like that, they just go home. Yep. Who cares? Right. So I see John's, uh, what John's saying, but as far as them racing on a holiday, boys, suck it up and go racing. Mm, no, see, that, and that's where I'm going to disagree with you. At that yes. Point. Mm-hmm. That, that's where I'm going to disagree with you at that point, because honestly, any, any and all pro sports, I, I don't care if it's football, basketball, baseball, racing, whatever the case might be, major holidays, if people need entertainment that damn badly, and I'm and I'm gonna be the first and, and I'm gonna say this being a, being a guy that's been in entertainment for 20 years now, if you need entertainment that freaking badly, that's what they made TikTok for. That's what they made Facebook Reels for. Go back and watch some videos. Have fun. Do that kind of shit. Or better yet, go back to the traditions of lore and your and actually rent a movie. Go on. Well, I think God. I think what Andy said, you know, uh, is part of the problem too because they go so far away. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, your football stadium, you know, on, uh, let's say, um, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. okay? You have a Thanksgiving dinner, you jump in the car, you ride an hour down to the stadium, you go to right. it. Well, right. on thanks, I mean, on um, Easter, they can't do that because Sunday morning, they want to be with their kids, do the eggs, and they can't drive six or eight hours and leave. You know, when I used to, back in the day, when I used to go to the races, we would leave at three or four in the morning. Exactly. You know, to get to Atlanta or Talladega or Bristol or Daytona or one of those places. Exactly. And uh, on Easter, you can't do that. You know, I have no problem with it with the drivers because, you know, they're going to get paid no matter what anyways. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say whether they don't want to be there. But um, your fans, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think it's a combination of being on the holiday and the late night and, you know, I was talking to Robin about this, okay? And if you look at the race, the, yeah, if you, if you look at the, um, 
the grandstands at most races, mm -hmm. back in the early 2000s, NASCAR got greedy, mm -hmm. and they started going way, way up with the prices. Yep. You know? I started out going to NASCAR races when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I felt the smells, the sounds, the enjoyment of it. I did, well, too. Back in the, yeah, and back in the 2000s, early 2000s, when they started getting expensive, people couldn't afford a family of four. Mm -hmm. So the kids now, back then, now are the adults who don't go. Yep. Because they didn't get the experience of the smells and the feels and the, and the enjoyment. And I think that's what the problem is. Most of these racetracks that they claim that they're um, sold out, well, if you look at the grandstands, half the grandstands are missing. Well not, that's only, right. well, not only that, too, but if you also look at it from a marketing perspective, and, and now, granted, as much as, as much as I love the Smith family, you know, Marcus Smith, Bruton Smith, God rest his soul, the, if you go look at Charlotte Motor Speedway, they've got it marketed in just the right way that with those seats, they are color-coded and designed to look like there's asses in the seats when those tickets weren't mm -hmm. sold. So right. it, so even even with a quote-unquote full house, uh, it, it's just a thing of the matter being that there's not actually all those asses in seats like there should be. But again, the before we run out of time here and, and get ready to go to our next break and go talk to Tom with the NASCAR Hall of Fame, is that... Again, the fact of the matter is, I don't give a damn what sport it is. I don't give a damn what holiday it is, as long as it, if it's a major holiday that you personally celebrate or is a nationally recognized holiday, don't have a fucking sporting event on that day. And yes, there are a lot of air wrenches in this segment, folks, and you just heard another one right there along with about three more before that. Uh, <laughs> but the simple fact of the matter is, Enjoy the holiday with your family. That is what that holiday is meant for, is family time. Now, I get it if you're a single person. I get it if you don't have any family that are close by that you can get home to right away. I get it. I get it. I understand that. But sporting events do not need to occur on those holidays. That, just plain and simple, go rent a movie Go go watch Netflix. Go do something of actual entertainment value that was done a while back. Let folks actually enjoy their holiday and quit being. That's a part of what the holiday's about. Sitting in front of the tube watching football or now NASCAR. Okay. Who okay. cares? Okay, no, that no, no. is Wayne Owens, folks. That is not burning rubber radios. So that here's what I want everyone to do: get on our social medias mm -hmm. on Facebook, TikTok. Go follow us. I'll follow you back. TikTok. Go over there and tell us what do you think? Should they be running this stuff on the holidays? If you, mm -hmm. you know what. I tell you what, if more folks out there say, no, we <laughs> shouldn't run it on the holidays, I will apologize to Wayne Owens. Because, <laughs> yes, football, NASCAR, or whatever else, get your asses out there, boys and girls, because it's time to go racing. It's time to go pay some bills. Oh, my God. God, Andy, shut <laughs> up. I, I, I swear, if I, if I had one of these, I'd be doing that every... Hmm. Oh. I actually, actually, no, you know what? Actually, I can't. Hold on. Okay. Yep. Here he comes. He's going to reach across the table and get you, Andy. Watch out. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. Either way. Either way, folks. It is that time where we step aside. We, uh, we got to take that next foreign fuel. And when we come back, we are going to have, again, probably one of the coolest guests that we've had on in the last little while, and that being the curator from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, Tom Jensen, when we come back. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing, and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. And in our family, we're used to getting involved, and I encourage you to do the same, especially when it comes to caring for your loved ones. When I think about Alzheimer's and the impact it had on my family, I recognize that losing a race isn't such a bad day after all. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough, but if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, 
and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. What can we learn from a child? That spreading joy is more important than a trophy. That when we help others, we heal ourselves that with a little love, we can make the biggest impact. At Speedway Children's Charities, our mission is simple. Help every child we can. Because all children deserve joy. And hope. And love. And if one child is still in need, then there's still work to do. Because their future is our future. And there's still so much they can teach us. Visit us online at burningrubberradio.com for recipes from the NASCAR chef, John Dix, and more great content. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. Now back to more Burning Rubber Radio. And we are back on Burning Rubber. It's producer Wayne along with the NASCAR chef, John Dix, and Andrew DeLay. And, boys, we've got ourselves, uh, we've got ourselves a heck of a guest this week here, John. Yep. And... I, I, you know, I'm so used to him actually saying more than just one word yep. when we come back from break, and all of a sudden it's just like, yep. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm watching, uh, what is that, Storage Wars or something? Like, yep, yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but with that said, here, folks, we're gonna get on over to our featured guest of the week here from the NASCAR Hall of Fame, one of the curatorial folks that work over there that uh, help put up all of the great displays that you see inside the Hall of Fame. And again, it's right there off of Brooklyn Village Avenue in Charlotte, North Carolina. Highly, highly, highly recommend checking out the NASCAR Hall of Fame. We've got Tom Jensen on the horn. Tom, how are you, bud? I'm doing great, buddy. How are you? Doing pretty well. So first things first that we want to touch on here, because this has always been the this has always been the biggest topic that we always talk about every single year, is the upcoming NASCAR Hall of Fame induction class. For well, this year, 2024, and I do believe that we should be seeing information about who gets out on the ballot here soon, correct? Correct. In the next week or two, um, NASCAR will be releasing the finalists for the, the class of 2025. There'll be two people on the modern era ballot. That's for people whose careers began in the last 60 years mm -hmm. and one pioneer ballot. Um, for for the uh, people whose careers began more than 60 years ago. So we'll have 10 modern era finalists for two spots and five pioneer finalists for one spot. And then in late May and the, the week before the Coca-Cola 600, we'll have the, the final vote and it will be announced live at the Hall of Fame. And, and now for folks that want to watch that, can they uh... – uh, can they actually go to the Hall of Fame and see that uh, announcement, or is that something that's kind of like closed off to media, like say via live stream or something else? We are the only pro sports Hall of Fame in North America that announces their next class on the same day we vote for it, and we are also the only Hall of Fame in North America that a guest can come in and buy a general admission wow. ticket and sit down and watch the announcement. You don't have to have a special pass. You don't have to know the secret handshake. You know, <laughs> you, know you, you don't need to be connected at all. Just come in, buy a ticket, and, and 
watch. It's kind of fun. Well, there you that's go, cool. folks. That that that's going to be the way to spend your Memorial Day weekend. And, and you know, you, you've got everything going on with the All Star Race before the week before that at North Wilkesboro, and then you can easily just come on down to the Hall of Fame, watch the announcement for the induction class of 2025, and then just head right up the road to Concord, North Carolina, and take in the Coca Cola 600. I mean, that you you can't do any better than that, folks. Legit. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a- it's a fun couple of weeks. We're, we're going to have a good time. Oh yeah, hands down for sure. And and speaking to that too, and this will be one of the one of the last topics we get to here before we get ready to wrap up for the week here with you, Tom. Is you know you talk about constantly having like fresh exhibits along with everything going on, like say with the induction ceremony and the announcement of the uh, class of twenty twenty five. Overall, what aside from the simulators, what would you say is probably one of the more popular? Uh, exhibits that you that you've had that's been a mainstay at the Hall of Fame. Well, Glory Road features eighteen cars ranging from nineteen fifty to, to twenty twenty two, and they encompass six different manufacturers and eight different current and past divisions, including the old convertible division. Mm-hmm. And there's just so many cool cars on there. We have. You know, the, the cars you'd expect from guys like Jeff Gordon and, yep. and Dale Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson. But we also have the Wood Brothers built a beautiful 1961 Ford Sunliner, Galaxy Sunliner convertible that <sighs> Kurt Turner raced. We have a car from the NASCAR Canada series. We have one of Daryl Waltrip's old, old cars that he drove for DEI. And one of the cool things about mm-hmm. this job is I'm always learning something new. Mm -hmm. We had Chad Knauson a while ago, and he's a member of the class of 2024, and he walked by that car. It's the number one Pennzoil Monte Carlo that Walter drove. And he goes, oh, I built that car when I was at DEI, my one year (laughs) at DEI. I was like, holy cow, you built that? And he said, yep. So there's a C Mm -hmm. and and two here. You know, if you're going to come here, you better plan on spending about three hours Mm -hmm. because there's so much. Oh yeah, and and I can attest to that too. I mean, I, it's been a while since I've been inside the Hall of Fame, but the but the times that I have been in there, even and like you said, you know, you learn something new every time you go in, whether it be a new exhibit or whether it be just some some new piece of history that you may not have known about previously. And uh, and Andy, you'll enjoy this too on Glory Road. I know I know intermittently from time to time they actually have the uh, the cars from the cars movie in there too on glory road oh, which really? is kind of fun <laughs> uh actually actually saw the hudson hornet one in there uh, back years ago when i went in there um but you know they also have the pit stop simulator too uh which a lot of folks you know uh, folks always ask me tom when when they're coming to charlotte they're like what's that and when they see the building i'm like oh that's an nascar hall of fame simulators glory road pit stop simulator so if you ever if you if you've ever wanted to be on a pit crew you can actually kind of get your you can kind of get your hands dirty a little bit and learn how to do it with the with the Gripton simulator there too, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but all in all, though, it the NASCAR Hall of Fame is just a place to it, it's a place you know again a family friendly venue just like a NASCAR track would be, and I I would dare say I would dare say it'd be something to go into once a week if you live in the Charlotte area. Uh-huh. We, we uh, welcome new visitors and we welcome repeat visitors. Like I said, there's a, there's a lot to see and do. You know, the Pit Stop Challenge, one of the cool things about it mm-hmm. is it challenges you jack the car up, fill it with gas, take one tire off, put it back on, and it's all timed electronically. And there, yep. there's two stations, so teams can compete against each other. And you see your score uh, pull up on you know, your time come up on the TV screen so you know if you if you beat your buddies on it. And there yeah. are a lot of people who compete very intensely on, on that on the pit stop challenge. Uh, I've seen a few I've seen a few times where people did and uh and it's, it's some of those guys I wouldn't be surprised if some of them actually went and been like, hey, I'm gonna go join a pit crew now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Tom, it has been an absolute blast having you on the show here for this yes. week. And and again, folks, if you want to get tickets or get a membership to the NASCAR Hall of Fame, it is NASCARHall.com. Go check it out and seriously consider getting getting yourself down there to the NASCAR Hall of Fame to check things out. 
And then, uh, and then of course, Tom, that announcement, of course, for the class of 2025 uh, before the Coca-Cola 600. What's the what's the approximate date this year for that? I know you said it earlier, but let's just rehash that one more yeah. time. Uh, hang on. Let me pull up my calendar. It is in May, and it will be the Wednesday before the 600, so it'll be the 22nd. There you go, folks. So uh, so the week before, get your butts down here, go to North Wilkesboro, go enjoy the All-Star Race, and then May 22nd, come on down to Charlotte, go watch the announcement of the Hall of Fame, and then the entire rest of the week, you got the Speed Weeks here in Charlotte with the Xfinity Series, the Truck Series, uh, the Cup Series, just everything that involves the world of NASCAR. Come on down to Charlotte and have fun for Memorial Day weekend. And, uh, Tom, with that said, though, uh, before we let you go, we have a tradition that we get folks in on. Now, we're not oh going to we're, we're make, make you yell it. We'll just, we'll just get you to say it just because it's cool. Uh, Kenny Wallace started this for us back in 2008, grabbed the mic out of Andy's hand, and shouted, burning rubber, baby, at the top of his lungs. And we get it from everybody in the NASCAR world. We, we get it from Kyle Larson. We get it from Chase Elliott. We get it from everybody. So we want to get and we I've even gotten it from Winston Kelly. So I figure I figure it only appropriate that we get it from you, sir. Burning rubber, baby. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Tom Jensen, curatorial manager at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And with that said here, folks, we're gonna step aside. We're gonna take that next foreign fuel. And when we come back, the NASCAR chef John Dix is in the house. Yeah, time to eat, baby. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing, and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. And in our family, we're used to getting involved, and I encourage you to do the same, especially when it comes to caring for your loved ones. When I think about Alzheimer's and the impact it had on my family, I recognize that losing a race isn't such a bad day after all. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough, but if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back, the My Pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, My Pillow 2.0. When I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My Pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My Pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. Now's the time to go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your MyPillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler, too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com. What can we learn from a child? That spreading joy is more important than a trophy. That when we help others, we heal ourselves. That with a little love, we can make the biggest impact. At Speedway Children's Charities, our mission is simple. Help every child we can. Because all children deserve joy. And hope. And love. And if one child is still in need, then there's still work to do. Because their future is our future. And there's still so much they can teach us. Fired up, and the chef has something good cooking. Oh, you're cooking! It's the NASCAR chef, John Dix, and more burning rubber. And we are back. It's burning rubber. Producer Wayne, NASCAR chef John Dix, Andy Delay, and boys, Tom Jensen. That was uh, that was a phenomenal, a phenomenal interview with that with that gentleman right there. And. Uh, folks, considering considering I'm I'm local to the Charlotte, North Carolina area, we were talking to Tom a little bit about it off the air here. Uh, 
we're gonna I'm gonna go make a trip down to the NASCAR Hall of Fame here in the next uh, next couple of weeks. And you said you've been there before, right? Yeah, back. And you in, looks familiar. Yeah, yeah, back back, back in uh, God. How, uh, like I said, it's been at least seven years since I've been to the Hall of Fame. Five to seven years. Like I remember going. I'm right telling you how up. this is gonna go. You'll be like, "Hey, I'm coming by." You, know, he'll be all waiting for you. You'll walk in, and he'll go, "Oh no, not this motherfucker!" And boop, <laughs> right back out the front door you go. <laughs> oh Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> uh, Andy, Andy. Um, oh, John, John, John. I love you, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> That's for you, brother. Uh, you're, 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 you're a class A asshole fart. <laughs> thank you, man. Here go these these air wrenches are going crazy today. I know this always happens on the cooking segment. I don't know why that is, but well, I mean, after all, we we do have to put the grill together every single week. So, <laughs> but you're right, Wayne. Uh, having Tom on was great, and uh, I've been to the Hall of Fame. So, gang, you know. Take a visit there. It really is good. It's really worth it. And yeah. uh, they do a good job, and uh, it's part of our sport like everything else. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, like we were, you know, like we were talking about during the interview, and or, uh, Andy, you brought it up there, where, you know, it is the most fan-accessible Hall of Fame uh, in any level of uh, – in, in any form of professional sport that's out there. Uh, right. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's football, basketball, baseball. Well – Baseball is kind of accessible too because you do have, I mean, you do have everything going on with the baseball Hall of Fame, but and same with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but that's a whole different Hall of Fame either way. Shut up, Wayne! I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry too. NASCAR Chef John Hicks, <laughs> what do you got this week, brother? Well, guys, a couple of days ago, I cooked some Boston butts on the grill, and with some of the leftover um, pork, we're going to make barbecue pork quesadillas. Oh. Mm. Mm. these are really good we're going to start with uh one pound of barbecue pork make sure it's all chopped up it's a whole lot easier than if you use sliced pork one cup of barbecue sauce a half a cup of fresh chopped cilantro one small onion chop it up about eight six inch flour tortillas if you got the big ones you can cut them in half but you want to get about six tortillas um eight ounces of shredded mexican cheese a half a cup of sour cream, and some guacamole if you like that, which I love some good guacamole. Oh, yeah. Now, in a bowl, you want to mix the pork, the sauce, the cilantro, and the onion, and then place your tortilla on, a, on top of a skillet or a griddle. You want to lightly grease it. All right, sprinkle the cheese on top and about a third of a cup of the meat on half of the tortilla. Mm -hmm. All right, cook it for about three to four, maybe five minutes until the cheese melts. Then you're going to fold it in half. All right, take it off and then just do the rest of the tortillas the same way. And they're good. They're tasty. And I don't know what it is about a quesadilla, but they're good. They are. Uh, Wayne, this will have you stinking. Really? The only word for it is. <laughs> <laughs> is that dude puking? No, that. <laughs> what Lord. the hell sound effect was that? <laughs> That was that was Homer Simpson, you know, the drooling effect when he when he eats his donuts. Oh okay. my god. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, Wayne. I've never watched that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, 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 folks, folks, I'm I'm dealing with the two old fogies today. <laughs> and everyone else out there is going, What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> hey Wayne, we resemble that remark. <laughs> Oh my God! Will you take that soundboard away from him, John? Before I freaking throw a bunch of water on it, I'm gonna I'm reach. I'm gonna reach across the table and unplug it, Andy. <laughs> oh my Lord, folks! Only on Burning Rubber Radio. <laughs> Start this. Yeah, man. I will tell you what, the day started off kind of rough off the air, but it's gotten better. Uh, oh yeah, just sit, just, sit, just sit there putting up with you two. I swear. <laughs> Uh, but again, folks, the NASCAR chef, John Dix, barbecue pork quesadillas. If you want to reach out to the chef and get a hold of him for any reason, it's john at brrtv.net. I almost said the other email address he used to have. Yeah. And, um, but either which way, john at brrtv.net. Uh, reach out to the NASCAR chef and send him your recipes, snide comments, compliments, whatever the case might be. And for the barbecue pork quesadillas, take one more 
good look at them there before we get ready to head over to our next foreign fuel and woo man that was um <laughs> i haven't laughed that hard in a while lordy lordy I, like, like like literally if it tells you how hard i was laughing when i was double muttleying andy there for a second mm-hmm. i literally hit the old simon and garfunkel darkness my old friend <laughs> <laughs> that soundboard man oh my god <laughs> But with that said here, folks, we have got to step aside. We've got to take that final forward fuel of the show. And when we get back here, boys, it's time for News of the Week, Xfinity Cup, Indy Cars in the News, World of Outlaws has got some news as well. We're going to touch on it when we get back. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever. My pillow 2.0. <gasps> when I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. Now's the time to go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your MyPillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler, too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. My grandpa Lou is the reason why my dad and I started racing, and I'm really proud to follow on his tracks. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. I've learned a lot on this journey with my grandpa Lou, and the memories of my grandpa will always be with me. And in our family, we're used to getting involved, and I encourage you to do the same, especially when it comes to caring for your loved ones. When I think about Alzheimer's and the impact it had on my family, I recognize that losing a race isn't such a bad day after all. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Talking about Alzheimer's can be really tough, but if you notice something, have a conversation with your loved one. Encourage them to see a doctor or offer to go with them. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. What can we learn from a child? That spreading joy is more important than a trophy. That when we help others, we heal ourselves. That with a little love, we can make the biggest impact. At Speedway Children's Charities, our mission is simple. Help every child we can. Because all children deserve joy. And hope. And love. And if one child is still in need, then there's still work to do. Because their future is our future. And there's still so much they can teach us. Burning Rubber is social. Follow us on x at twitter.com forward slash BRR underscore radio. Now back to more Burning Rubber. And we're back on Burning Rubber. Andy DeLay, NASCAR Chef John Dixon, and me, Producer Wayne. And, Lots of uh, me over there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> that air wrench is going to blow out, man. <laughs> that, that, air, that air wrench is getting a lot of work this week, man. Uh, I got a feeling, folks, I'm going to go back and count them all by the end of the, uh, from the beginning of the show till 
the end here. I got a feeling we're probably going to set a new record for the amount of air wrenches in a single show. Uh, no, um, no doubt. But either way, here we got to get over to some. We got to get over to news of the week here real quick before we get to picks for Martinsville this weekend. So I had my races confused last week, so now they're going for the grandfather clock this weekend. And, there you go. Uh, so some good stuff coming up at Martinsville this weekend. But we got to talk about Richmond before anything else here. Kyle Larson, Young Money had the pole and uh, was actually was all set to potentially win the race. And then all of a sudden, not not so much, spins out with two to go. And then on top of that, Andy, you brought up a valid point in the open of the show here where it seems like Martin Truex Jr. is rather snake bit because yep. – uh, he, you know, he Poor made a, he, he, actually, I heard something that yeah, Sunday, actually, when I was going back and looking at social media and whatnot, where Truex had actually filed a complaint with NASCAR that Hamlin jumped the restart before the restart zone. Yeah, he uh, did. He did. Are you serious? Yeah. Yep, Boy, I did. tell you, Coach Gibbs is going to love that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and considering yeah, you, their yeah. teammates, too, when <clears> you get called out like that, something something's up. Yeah, you can clearly see he jumped it right before that start. It wasn't much, but a it, jump it, is a jump. You yeah, know? it was. It was. Like, it was like a second or two prior to the restart zone. Right. Well, well, the thing is, is that Truex drove pissed mm. off for the last five laps, mm -hmm. and he took it out on Larson, and Larson wasn't even mad about it after the race. Right. He was like, hey, he was yeah. just driving mad, and yeah. you know, because he he door he door slammed Larson on the back stretch mm -hmm. just just because Hamlin used them up and yep. that's one reason i'm not a hamlin fan is this he'll cry oh, they use me up on the track <laughs> but he does it to everyone else mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. And, then, and then and then you know you find out that the ones that he does it to they don't go around bitching and complaining about it but uh but they sure do find a way to get their revenge the next week though which is funny as all oh yeah man last year or the year before last whatever it was hamlin crying about mm -hmm. ross chastain mm -hmm. to the point of nauseam so yep yeah yep i think Literally. next week's race is going to be fun oh yeah <laughs> oh my gosh yeah. yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one because that martinsville is actually a true uh a track Wow. I, here I am with the onomatopoeias. Mar Martinsville, Martin Truex, Truex and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Truex and tracks. There you go. Um, but with that, regardless of the fact being that Martinsville is a track that Martin Truex actually usually favors pretty well at. So, I, I, you know, I would say good chances are that we may see Truex get some revenge on Hamlin. From uh, oh, this yeah. past weekend at Richmond, uh, this weekend coming up in Martinsville. Yeah, you reckon, Wayne? <laughs> yeah, I would, I, I would, I would think so. But we'll just have I, to. Wait I got a feeling they're not going out to lunch this week after the team meeting. <laughs> yeah, no, no, probably not. Probably not for the next few weeks. Um, well, I got to give it to, to Truex though. He handled that very well. Yeah. He's he was very off the track he handled it very yeah. well he was very mm. composed but he let them know mm. exactly what he thought out on the track oh yeah, yeah on, on the radio he was a little oh my god <laughs> yeah he he was he was air wrenching about as bad as we were on the team radio um uh, which by by again by all accounts very warranted because of what happened but we got to get on to picks now for martinsville here and um Oh, man. Martinsville Speedway. Andy, pick number one, brother. Pick number one. I'm telling you, Martin Truex Jr. will not be denied at Martinsville this weekend, folks. He's going to get his uh, 2024 first W of the year. All right. NASCAR chef John Dix, it's on you, brother. <clears throat> well, Andy, that's a good pick. But I think um, our young man, William Byron, is going to get his second win. For the or third win, right? Yeah, I was going to say third win. Yeah, third win. Because he runs good at Martinsville. So Yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's gonna be a little bit of um, not retribution. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, why why retribution? is retribution? No, no. I'm gonna <laughs> uh, folks. I'm gonna kill him later. I swear, I'm gonna kill him. Um, if you see me on the news, don't worry, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> and I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, reconciliation. That's the word I was looking for here. A little, little bit of reconciliation for, uh, for Kyle Larson this week. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Larson comes up and gets the win this week at Martinsville. That's so. a good pick. Yeah. 
So, and, oh yeah, that's 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 always good. Yeah, yeah. Young money, young money's gonna be my pick, and uh, it's the second time I'm picking him this year too. So I gotta be careful because I only got three more times I can use him. Yeah, um, I think I'm my second Truex in a row. Yeah, you're on your second Truex in a row. Yeah, too. So you, you got to start watching out how many times you pick him too. Mm-hmm. I but, think that's the first time I picked Byron though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, yeah. I do believe so. Yeah. And uh, God, and it's, you know what? You know what's even funnier to think is that we're already all, over a quarter of the way through the season already, too. Isn't that, isn't that nuts? I mm-hmm. like it's just it, it's nuts to think that you know you, we were already over a quarter of the way through the season, and literally next month we switch over to NBC. NBC, that's right. Which, by the way, just keep those three letters in your head. There mm-hmm. might be some significance to burning rubber radio someday. Maybe not. Yeah, may, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But uh, you never know. The word, the le- they, th- Think about it. Look at it this way. We could be. We'll we'll be like Howard Stern. Be like we're on WNBC. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think we'll be on WNBC. <laughs> Well, it, but it's, folks, if you if you're listening to us on the radio, please go check us out on YouTube, Wingding TV, mm-hmm. or Rumble. Uh, so uh, you can see all the videos and the uncut versions with no air. Yep, but wrencher. Yep, no no air wrenches at all. So you can hear me. You can hear me tell you to go fuck himself. <laughs> be careful, folks. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Oh my god. Whew. man, editing this week is going to be. Uh... Andy, you give you you giving me more work to do this week than I think I've had in a while. But with that said, here, folks, we have got to get out of here for another week of burning rubber on all of our affiliate radio stations: YouTube, Rumble, tw- uh, TikTok, everywhere you can find us at. We love you guys, and for everybody involved in the show here, the NASCAR Chef John Dix, Andy Delay, and our guest this week, Tom Jensen. I'm producer Wayne, and until then, next week, burning rubber, baby, burning rubber, baby, burning rubber, baby. Burning Rubber Radio is a production of White Lightning Entertainment with studios in Statesville, North Carolina, and was brought to you by Drive Refine. It's more than driver coaching. It's Drive Refine. Visit DriveRefine.com to get signed up today. This week's show was produced by Wayne Owens. Remember to visit BurningRubberRadio.com for news, recipes, and more great content. Burning Rubber Radio can be seen on Rumble, YouTube, or Wingding.tv and heard on radio stations nationwide. Any use of the accounts or descriptions contained in this broadcast must be the express written permission of White Lightning Entertainment.